Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. If you haven't been here before, this is predominantly a turning channel where each and every week I teach people how to make things on the lathe. This week we're going to be working with some more Banksia pods. And uh, these are, if you haven't seen these before, these come from Australia. And they are just the coolest things ever when they're combined with resin. So what I want to do with these this time is, first of all, I want to stabilize these. But what we're going to do is cut them into cookies and then glue them into a bowl form and we should make a really neat looking bowl. So that's what we're going to do with these dinosaur looking things this week. <laughs> so before we do any stabilizing, I want to get over to the bandsaw. We'll cut these up and we'll go from there. So getting right into this, uh, yeah, more Banksia pods. I just could not pass up the opportunity to make more something else with this and of course that fuzz material we're gonna deal with that here shortly with the stabilization of it and um, I could have cut these on the chop saw but I thought the bandsaw was a better alternative uh, you can't really get a good flat surface to hold it against kind of the fence so I figured the, the bandsaw would be the, the safer alternative and then, of course, this is a brass brush that's mounted on my lathe and brass coated brush, sorry. And uh, yeah, that's what they look cleaned up. These, I don't know what it is about these pods. I love working with these pods. Uh, they just give just a really unique look to anything that you, uh, that you create with them. Like I said earlier, we're going to be stabilizing these pieces. And in one of my videos, my previous videos, I had a bunch of marbles hit the floor. And there was a lot of people wondering, why, why do you have all these marbles? <laughs> so anyway, this is cactus stabilizing juice. And I use the marbles uh, for two things. I'll throw them on top of wooden pieces. And that generally will keep them submerged in the resin. And along with that, it will also, also displace uh, the resin. So... You know, if, if, if you've got a fairly large piece of wood that you're trying to stabilize, well, you're going to need a lot of stabilizing resin in order to do that. So if you dump the marbles on top of it, it displaces the marbles, and then you don't need as much stabilizing resin to stabilize. Now, two weeks ago, the project that we did, I didn't stabilize these, and it was fine. And... I certainly could have done the same thing this time around, but I haven't covered stabilizing in a while, so that was one reason. Uh, but the other reason is I'm going to be using an art cast to combine these pieces together. And last project, I used deep cast, and it has a long open time, and it's able to penetrate and solidify those areas. Where the art cast, I wasn't sure that it was going to have enough time to do that in those little furry areas on these pods. Just gonna leave the pump running here to see how much more we can get out of this. Yeah, that is, yeah, you can't draw any more vacuum than that. I'm just gonna keep cycling this on and off, on and off until I don't see any more bubbles and then I'll bring you back. All right, it has been an hour and a half and uh, there's literally no air coming out of this now. Uh, we're at full vacuum. We'll turn this so you can maybe see it. Here's that 30. So what I'm going to do now is release the vacuum and we're going to leave this in here overnight. And that will absorb any of the stabilizing, stabilizing resin. And then we will cook these tomorrow to set it. See you tomorrow. All right, it's time to cook our Banksia pod biscuits. All right, so the instructions to uh, cure this resin is two to three hours at 200 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put that at about 225, I think. And we're on convection. Okay, that should be it. Uh, it's a little nicer day today, so I'll be able to open the doors and then that way uh, we're not gonna get smoked out of here. 
But uh, you know, two to three hours, so this is gonna take three cycles to make sure that all the stabilizing resin is cured. Uh, the great thing about this is that there's a tray down below, so any excess uh, stabilizing resin will drip off and land on the tray and not on the, uh, the elements. So that's awesome. So this is 30 minutes into it, I thought I'd show you this. This is why you need to have uh, your doors open. <laughs> and I can already see some, some of the stabilizing resin landing down on the tray below. Whew, stinky. Well, that's two hours. Still got smoke rolling out of there. I'm gonna give it at least another half hour. Then our Banksia cookies will be ready. Get your milk ready. Yum. All right, so it's actually two days after I started stabilizing these. And what I did was, you know, I, I put these upside down on a paper towel like this and then flipped them over. That way all kind of the excess stabilizing resin would kind of run off. We're not getting big blobs of stuff when it goes in the oven. Uh, I've been struggling with layout a little bit here. My intention right from the get-go was to turn this into a bowl. So that's that's what I've got done here. Now I do have three other ones that I've stabilized as well. But you know, the, it just doesn't look good. Um, this seems to be the best way that I've been able to find it. Uh, I've been able to lay it out where I'm reasonably happy with it. Uh, the good thing about this layout is it will give us some resin pockets on the side here. So uh, I think that's the way that I'm going to go with, with this. Along with that, I'm just going to glue these top ones in place. And that should keep everything from wanting to move around. So that's important. I don't want this to be like this when it goes in the pressure pot. So even as much as I can across the top, so let's glue these in and then I'll show you the next step. Those who have done some stabilizing before may have noticed that I didn't use any tin foil. A uh, common practice before was to wrap things in tin foil and then throw them in the oven and that way it kind of contained the mess. The problem with that, that stabilizing resin within all these little seed pockets would have been just all crusty in there and made a huge mess. All right, so now I want to put a well, we call it a shield, and the reason for that is because I plan on using this, and it's rice. I'm move this out of the way so you can see. So these are two kitchen bags that have been filled with rice. And what I'm going to do is I'm only, you know, I'm a little worried about the plastic from the bag encroaching into these areas. So that's why that's there. Now I'm gonna take the point and put it right down on top of the Banksia pod that's right in the very bottom. And there, I think that, pack that in. This is moved though. The other thing too is I don't know if this is going to be an issue, so I'm just going to throw some tape on this to make sure that it isn't going to be an issue. All right, so <laughs> now when I think of Australia, um, I think of sports teams. I'm, I'm big into sports, like watching sports, play a lot of sports when I was younger, and you know, I know that the flag of Australia is actually blue with the Union Jack in one corner and there's some stars, looks like, is on it. But, you know, I always associate Australia with green and gold. So that's what we're going to use for our two colored epoxies here. I might throw a little bit of midnight black in with this enchanted green because I, I, I want it to be a little darker than this. And along with that, we're also going to throw in some Hypershift. And it is the, uh, the blue, green, and gold. That's the Hypershift that we're going to use as well. 
Uh, one of the tough, tough things that we're going to have to try and figure out here is how much resin this is going to take. Um, ordinarily, I, you know, I like to use the rice method to measure the, the volume, but I can't really do it here. If you tried to do that, the rice is going to get stuck down in all these openings and, you know, we'll see it in the end product. I, I just, I know that's how it would go. And so the thing is, if you're short on resin, because I'm going to be using an air cast and we're going to combine them together from each side at the same time, then, you know, you're just going to end up with a shorter bowl, I suppose. But uh, anyway, it's, um, it's hard, very hard to figure out exactly what it's going to be here. But I just don't want to be too short on it or else, you know, you end up with a small little bowl and you're not really going to get the best use out of these pods. I know that this, you know, I definitely want to try and fill this right to the top. But uh, the likelihood of that happening is probably not all that great. <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm going to I'm going to mix up a liter and a half of the green and the gold, two separate containers. And hopefully that's going to be enough. And hopefully it's not so much that we're wasting it either. So there's the art cast. If you're looking for color separation, it is easily achieved with art cast. The only limitations are on the depth of pour because art cast is really only recommended to up to an inch pour. I have poured it deeper and this pour here actually is deeper. It's actually an inch and a quarter. Yeah, I think it's an inch and a quarter, but in reality, because it's curved in some spots, it may be almost two inches deep. So, you know, it was risky. I, I was worried about thermal cracking, but uh, we'll see what happens here in the future. And of course, pearl gold, I think, is appropriate color, gold color for, for this Australian-themed project. And there's the enchanted green again. And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm going to throw in a little bit of black because that was just, I wanted it to be a little deeper in color. And uh, the gold mixed up really nicely, but it was still, the green just wasn't deep enough for me. So there's the midnight black. Only used a little bit of that because I know that it can overpower a color. And of course, we can't forget the hyper shift to give us that extra sparkle and dimension within the epoxy. Love my hyper shift. Well, what do you think? Might be a little darker than I like, but you know what? That's green and gold, 100%. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is move these into the clean room where the heat is. And once these hit 50 degrees, we'll do the pour. I'll also move the, uh, the casting into the pressure pot so it's all ready to go as well. So we'll see you when we're uh, when we're ready to pour. All right, we're at 55.9 Celsius. That's 132 Fahrenheit. So we got to get pouring. Now what I'm going to do is take the gold and pour it in here and try and fill in all these pod holes, green on the other side, and then I'll combine them. But I think it's going to be messy. We'll have to. <laughs> we'll find out here in a second. Yeah, that is warm. Whew. Well, that ain't a bad estimating if I do say so myself. I'll just pour this into my cups and we'll be able to use this in a future project. Ah, well, good morning. I don't see any thermal cracking on the top. So let's hope that that <laughs> remains the, that way down in, inside of this. Hmm. All right, let's get this race out of here first. Uh, well, that's sunk in a little further than I Hope it would, but hopefully that's not going to be an issue here moving forward with this. I should mention if you are going to use the rice method, uh, 
you see how I put one of those cable ties on the top of the two bags? Well, make sure you don't tighten that down. That way, inside the bag, uh, it can equalize in pressure when it goes into the pressure pot. I don't know what the results would be if it was sealed up, so I always leave it just a little bit loose. I guess I'll uh, worry about this after I get it on the lathe. This thing's just moving around too much. Well, I don't see any thermal cracking and we've got really good color separation too. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's uh, clean up the bottom here and we'll get a glue block on that and we'll get this on the lathe. Just using the cuts all sanding disc here to grind a nice flat spot on the bottom of this bowl. That way we can stip, stick on our waste block and that's just been dipped in hot melt glue that's been melted in an electric frying pan. That's not too bad for eyeballing it. So I initially started with the number three Hercules from Hunter Tool Systems and uh, soon found that, you know, I was just having a, huff, a hard time getting rid of that hot melt glue. So I switched back to the 5 8 bowl gouge just to clean up that area. That way the, the cutter doesn't get all clogged up. So as it usually is, um, we're just going to strip off the excess epoxy here. We're see, kind of see what we're dealing with. I knew going into this that because those pods are on their sides that there was going to be a ton of voids to fill. It doesn't matter. And you know, some people will say, well, why didn't you use the vacuum chamber? And the reason why I didn't use the vacuum chamber, because if I did, these two epoxies are going to combine. And there's such a large volume that they're probably going to start thermally setting quicker than normal. So, you know, you don't really have a ton of time when you're working with this much art cast and it's in a small container like this. So keep that in mind if you're if you're thinking about doing a project like this. But, you know, that's that's given us a, a first indication that, you know, this thing is going to look pretty sharp. I was well, I wasn't sure how this was going to look. Um, I really wanted to see the seed pod areas and you know when you're looking at it from the side of course you're going to have a lot of visual interest that way but I wasn't sure how this was going to all pan out for this project and you know I'm pleased with them I'm actually more than pleased with it. I really like this bowl so um, yeah I mean I'm glad that I did this it believe it or not this has been in the back of my mind for a very long time I was just waiting for the right size pods to come along uh, even using smaller pods, I mean, you'd have to use a lot of them, but using smaller pods in this kind of orientation will look really cool as well. I decided to wear a glove. Uh, <laughs> I know that some people say, oh, you should never wear a glove on a lathe, but, you know, I, I would sooner wear a glove than have resin shards embedded in my hand. Or these Banksia pod pieces coming off of there are, are not going to be any fun if they happen to shatter and, and hit your hands either. So that's that's why I'm wearing a glove. And uh, as long as it stays on the you know the the operator side of the tool rest, there should never be an issue with wearing gloves. So the great thing about doing these voiceovers is that you can cover basically last week's projects and project and go over basically. The comments and this kind of thing uh so last week's was a bird's eye maple piece that you know it it needed a ton of love there was lots of issues with it and in the voids i put in the aluminum shavings and the one thing that really i was surprised by is a you know there was a number of people who didn't really care for the aluminum shavings i thought that it was going to be a really cool contrast uh but hey to each his own um <laughs> hey we're it would be a really strange world if we all like the same things so anyway if you missed that video i will link that at the end of this video and uh hopefully you enjoy it uh we are already at a over 121,000 at the filming of this so um thank you thank you so much for for all the people that have supported me up to up to date so far uh it's 
really awesome being a content creator for YouTube. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really do appreciate each and every one of you that watch my content and push it to others. Thank you. So there is what this is basically going to look like on the outside. And I'm really digging this. I'm glad that we've got lots of seed pod areas coming through. Very, very pleased with the way that looks. Still got that plastic shield in there that's going to drive me crazy trying to get out because it, it's in there good. Uh, I think that if this epoxy had a sat another day, it would make the epoxy a lot more brittle and it probably would have come out a little easier than it did. Uh, one thing to really be careful of if you're going to try and do something like this, don't be so aggressive that you actually, you know, crack your epoxy when you're trying to get these pieces out. Like at this stage, the epoxy's got a little bit of flex in it, so I wasn't too worried about just damaging the epoxy. However, this will create issues coming up. <sighs> there. That just shows you how tough epoxy is. I was beating on that thing pretty hard and, uh, well, all's good. All right, back to turning. So as you watch me trim up the rim here, you'll, I mean, this is a good reason why I'm wearing that glove because those stabilized Banksia pods coming off the top of this and those resin shards sure wouldn't have felt good in your hand. So another reason why I'm using this glove. So anyway, we're going to just trim this up and of course move inside of the bowl and trim up the inside of this and then we'll be able to uh, move on to something else. But there will be an issue that comes up here in the future and, and you know, I'll talk about this. So, you know, some people wanted me to talk about, you know, if, if I could turn the clock back, what would I do differently as far as my wood turning experience is concerned, where I started and, and where I am now. And, uh, you know, we had three kids and, you know, my wife, was a stay-at-home mom for a while so you know we we didn't really have any disposable income for me to take a a thousand or two thousand dollar wood turning course but you know if if i could swing that swing the cost of it i definitely would take a wood turning course of some sort uh obviously a beginner course if you're starting off and you know i, I think that that kind of puts you ahead of the curve and Along with that, you know, if you can find a wood turning club in your area, again, that is another huge, huge thing. You can gain a lot of knowledge from the members. And of course, you'll be able to buy tools, uh, used lathes and this kind of stuff from the other members. So, you know, if I had to, if I had the opportunity to reset this again, I would definitely do a wood turning course and, you know, try and find the money to do so. Because I think that it would have put me even further ahead of where I am now. So, we were having some movement, and I noticed that the glue block was cracked. So that's what I'm doing here with the thin CA right now. All right, so I thought that I would show this to you because if you're using this method, this certainly can happen to you. When I was doing the inside, it's actually quite violent, and it was out of balance, and I noticed that there was starting to be a lot of movement in the, in the piece. So, that was a big an alarm bell because there's no way these are going to move and the resin for the most part should never move either. It's, it's, a, it's an inert object, if you will. We'll come to find out that the, uh, the glue block had almost split in half. So I just uh, made this this morning. I was getting short on, on uh, glue blocks for my, for my face plates. Now this crack may have been there from the from the get-go, maybe I missed it, but this has certainly happened to me before, so you definitely gotta really watch these. If you're starting to get a lot of moving in, in the piece that's mounted on the lathe, you know, something's something's up. Maybe it's wood tension, like I covered last week. Maybe it's not. But in this case, it was a crack. So anyway, it's filled with a thin CA from Starbond, and um, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere now. But anyway, just keep an eye out for that. And of course, my, my waste blocks that I put on these face plates, they're side grain. 
And the reason for that is because side grain will hold a screw better. If this was in, an end grain um, waste block, like I like to put on, say, my hollow forms, then, you know, a, a screw doesn't hold into that very well. So that's why I don't use end grain waste blocks on these that are going on the bottoms of bowls. So of course, when I was talking there at the lathe, I was, you know, I was in the moment. And after reviewing the footage during editing, I didn't have any issues until <laughs> I started hammering down on top of the, uh, trying to get that little spacer out of there. And, you know, <laughs> it just never dawned on me at the time that with me hammering on that, that it actually probably cracked the, the glue block. Now, it may have already had a crack in there. I've been doing this a long time, and usually I know that it can take that kind of abuse, and rarely does that happen, but it certainly has in the past. There's no doubt about that. But I was, um, I just didn't notice it at the very beginning when I first started taking out the inside of this piece. So, you know... Uh, Again, tuned into sounds and, and the way things are acting. Shut your lathe off and look and see what's going on. Because something's not right. Because it shouldn't be moving. And if it's moving, find out why it is. So now that we've got the glue block back together. And I pulled on the bowl when I was actually gluing it. Just to kind of bring it back into alignment. So that means we need to trim the whole thing up again. <laughs> so... Uh, just got done the inside. Well, we'll have to do some more trimming from here on. But, you know, I, I, I'm really happy with the way this looks. I know there's probably going to be some people question why I didn't take those three leftover pods and cut them in half and then fit them in the rim. And the reason for that is because they were too large. So I could have fit maybe four or five of them in, but then you would have had, an, a, you know, an empty spot. And, you know, that just wouldn't have looked good. Uh, another comment is probably going to be the thickness on this piece. And when I initially looked at this piece, uh, the rim detail, how the resin wraps around the inside and the outside is just spectacular. I know you haven't seen it yet, but you will. So that's why I left it as thick as I did. And the other thing along with that is the thinner these get, the less of those seed pod areas are going to be shown. So that was another reason why I left it thick. But we got a bubble problem, or a void problem, I should say. Okay, so what do you think so far? I think it's a pretty cool looking thing, to be honest with you. Uh, but we have got a bunch of voids in here, and I knew they were going to be there. Just the way those pods are situated. Like, that's a prime example. That was sitting this way, so that, you know, there's nowhere for the air to escape. So it's going to be up inside of the pod. Uh, yeah, totally expect this. A uh, little surprised that we're seeing some fuzz here. So I don't know, that stabilizing resin was getting a little old, so that could be part of the reason for it. And of course, we got a bunch of it on the outside to fill as well. And what we're gonna do, or what we're gonna use, is the UV resin from Designer Epoxy. And what I've done is I've already mixed up some green and some gold and put a little bit of hyper shift in there with them. So let's start filling. And of course, to cure this resin, we're gonna be using a UV light. And I am fortunate enough to have two of them to speed the process up here. But uh, anyway, let's fill some voids. And we'll get some UV light on these and then we can get it back on the lathe, give it a final trimming, and then uh, do some sanding. So there's your UV light. I'll throw this on here for two minutes and then I'll just keep working my way around the bowl until we get it all filled and we'll see you back on the lathe. So having those two lights, believe it or not, will really speed up your progress. I like to leave those lights on there anywhere from two to three minutes per spot. So if you've got a bowl like this that's got voids all through it, then, you know, you're looking at 
20 minutes, a half hour before you're able to get back on the lathe. So what I like to do is I put the UV resin in the voids, hold the UV light on it for like a couple of seconds so it doesn't move. And then I fill the entire bowl and then I just stack those two UV lights together and cure up around the bowl. It is so much faster to do that. So, you know, if you're looking to increase production, spend the money and get another UV light. And of course, these ones come from Desire Epoxy. Really, really love them. Powerful lights too. Finally, on to sanding. These are the three and a half inch nipple discs from sandpaper.ca. I'm only going to sand this piece from 60 to 180. And because we're going to do an epoxy coat on this. And then you're going to be able to see that rim detail that I'm talking about. Well, you've probably seen it in the thumbnail anyway. But, um... I just couldn't thin this out and lose that detail. Couldn't do it. This is three ounces of the Pro Series and a silicone barbecue brush. If you're new to my videos, the reason why I'm using a silicone barbecue brush is because the epoxy will pull hairs out of normal brushes and then you're going to end up with those hairs in your piece in the end. So. It's best not to do that. And then I just use my glove to kind of rub it in. And don't forget the torch. Well, what do you think of that? Again, the resin is a very, very cool. Love it where the two colors come together. It's a really cool area. Of course, the... Uh, Holes where the seeds were are filled in with resin now. Very cool. Let me know in the comments what you think. See you tomorrow for the uh, first coat of water-based Waterlux. It's kind of scary, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but we'll find out how it's going to act. See you tomorrow. Well, good morning. Got some bubbling action happening overnight. Fully expected that. Uh, really not a whole lot though. And that's due to the stabilizing. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put this on the lathe and we'll start sanding at 180 and we'll go all the way to 800 as my heater kicks on. So I was really looking forward to working with the h2o lux as it's called and um, one of the main reasons for that is because the you know the water lux original it's it's got quite a strong odor and where the water-based stuff doesn't hardly at all hardly even smell it so that was going to be a big bonus as far as using that is concerned so anyway once i got sanded to 800 that is the triple e buffing compound and we're going to buff this piece out and then after that we'll clean it up with some denatured alcohol and get our first coat of water-based finish on. And there's why you should clean off your pieces with denatured alcohol. So this week we're going to be trying something new. This is Waterlux's H2O Lux. And um, as you can see, it's gloss. And it's water-based, as H2O would indicate. Um, it's got like a really creamy look to it. I don't know if that's going to mask the grain. I, I don't know. We'll just, let's just try it and see what's going on. All right, so this isn't the first time that I've used a water-based finish and they give you that milky appearance like you're seeing and then of course they dry clear. Um, yeah, can't really tell if it brings the grain alive because you really can't see it all that great. You know, like it's all kind of streaky. So it's going to be very interesting tomorrow to see what this is going to look like. Anyway, we'll see you uh, tomorrow for the 
second coat, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to buff this piece. If I'm just going to stick with the triple E, if I may try some other 6.0 steel wool or something, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, can't really, <laughs> can't really tell you what it's going to look like or show you what it's going to look like right now. Anyway, we'll have a better indication tomorrow. We'll see you then. Well, good morning. So this is what it looks like after it's been cured. Uh, certainly looks a lot better now than it did <laughs> yesterday. But again, all water-based finishes pretty much look like that. I did have to fill a small little hole here with UV resin. I don't know how I missed that yesterday and a couple of little spots where I spilled the resin. So I'll use some 800 to try and just grind those back very lightly. And uh, I think we'll probably try some 6.0 steel wool on this and get our next coat on. So we're going to come up with some um, some issues here very shortly. I uh, using the 800. A lot of times you can get away with that and not kind of break through the finish and affect too much as far as the next coat is concerned. And of course, I had a 60 steel wool, and I got it from Ardec in Quebec, the province of Quebec. But immediately I noticed some issues and just areas throughout the piece that. I was like, okay, this isn't normal, certainly. So I, at this point, I'm saying, okay, like I, I know that this is going to be an issue. and But I'm going to try and clean this off. And we might be able to, to rescue this piece with the, the water-based um, finish. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, I, you know, I don't think that this is going to work out. Uh Sorry, somebody did send me an email and they said that they tried the Waterlux on the, uh, the the water-based Waterlux and they had nothing but issues with it. But, you know, I thought that I would give it a try. Uh, apparently, it's not really all that great on vertical surfaces, which, of course, you're going to have within a bowl where, you know, the original Waterlux stuff that I like to use will lay out nice and flat and not sag okay i'm gonna call it here uh we're not gonna go further with this it's just right full of streaks and it's just i don't know it's not i don't think that it's working well with the resin all these built up areas it's on the resin and it's not so much on these pods so you know i i don't know if it's if it's an issue with it adhering to the epoxy or what the deal is either way I think that I think what I'm gonna do is start sanding this back at 500 and uh, we'll switch over to the gloss or the uh, just the normal water lux I probably one of the biggest problems I've got is if I don't do this now Today is Tuesday, Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll be able to two coat this and then we'll be able to do things on uh, Thursday like we normally do. But I, I just, I'm not feeling the confidence that it's going to be an issue. But there's lots of it down in this area here, this, this area here. Uh, you know, it's just, I think that it's probably a great product, but it's just not meant for this application. So, Sanding it is. All right, so before we put our first coat of Waterlux gloss on here, uh, just to let you know what I did, I basically started sanding this at 180, went all the way to 800, buffed it, and then cleaned it with the denatured alcohol prior to this coat finish. So just to be clear, I am a Waterlux fan, and I really do like the products that they make. So, you know, in the future, uh, we'll use this probably on something like cutting boards or something like that, because this is 100% non-toxic once it's fully cured and would work great for that. There's that shine and sparkle that we're used to seeing. That hyper shift in there just really just makes that resin pop. It's crazy how much it, 
it changes it. Love kind of this transition area right here where the two colors are meeting. Really, really cool. And looking at it in this direction, I mean, it just sparkles. There's the other transition area there. Very cool. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing the second and the third coat. All I'm going to do is buff it the same way that I usually do and then put another coat on. And we'll see you when we're doing the bottom. Hopefully, two coats are going to do it. I mean, it looks really good. So I'm hoping just one more coat will do it and then we'll be able to finish this video up with a nice finish piece. See you when we're doing the foot. So after two coats of Waterlux Original, we're ready to part this piece from the waste block. I did have tons of issues with the very bottom of this piece. I actually had to fill it three times with UV resin. And when I would put it back in the lathe, I would expose more voids. Or, yeah, like you can see, like where those seed pockets are, that air was just trapped in there and it had nowhere to go. And then, you know, and I knew that this was going to be an issue for sure. But on the bottom, anyway, I would, I took, I would take it off the lathe here. You're going to see here in a second. And I would fill these pieces and then put it back on the lathe and then trim it up and expose more. And, and I did this three times before I finally just decided to fill it with the UV resin and then grind it back with the sandpaper and, and not do any tooling. Because every time, every time I would cut it back with the Hercules, I'm like, no, there's another void, or maybe I didn't get it filled. Anyway, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, please leave a comment down below and tell me your thoughts on this week's project. Let's have a last little chat about this beautiful bowl. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think about this. Uh, I think it's really cool. I really, really like working with these pods. Give you such a really, really neat look. Here's the inside. I think that, you know, this is only two coats. So I think that it does need another coat just to be sure before it goes to its new home. And uh, here's the bottom. I know the details are really hard to see on there, but uh, it's uh, it's quite busy. But the thing is, I, I thought about engraving, and any time you engrave on wooden type stuff and then into the resin, it just it doesn't look good. So that's why it's written on there. But anyway, uh, once three coats go over the bottom of that, it should be sealed up nice. Size on this is 10 inches across, four inches tall, and it's a seven eighths of an inch in thickness. So I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are not happy about that. Um, the thing is, the thinner you get, the more of this detail you're going to lose. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, I really like this area right here. I noticed that there's a little line there from when I put the finish on. So yeah, it's definitely going to need another coat. Um, too bad the water-based stuff didn't work out. Uh, just the wrong application for it, and, you know, but you know, you never know till you try. Uh, thanks for the warning, the person that, that sent me the email on it. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this. I think it's absolutely awesome, and hopefully you guys too. You guys do as well, and I should mention this is for sale. If you're interested in this piece, send me an email to spraguewoodturning at gmail.com, and I will disclose the price then in case this is a gift. Don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below to be entered into the next giveaway at 130,000 subscribers when we get there. Uh, again, we're just creeping up and creeping up, so it's awesome. Thank you so much for those who have subscribed recently. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that so that we can get a little further along here. Uh, next week is going to be kind of, um, it's going to be a vase project of some sort. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be yet but it's going to be a vase i do know that so please come on back next week for that uh let me see what else again designer epoxy with my code you'll be able to get 
10% off your order, free shipping within continental USA and Canada, and of course, 10 free uh, color bags. So that's an awesome deal. And of course, all my other sponsors, the links are in the description down below. So if you need some stuff, head on down there and put some money back in your pocket. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That is the largest way for me to build my presence here on YouTube. I would really appreciate that. And of course, that thumbs up is very important as well. So please do that. See you next week.